Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SA Accounting Academy. Uh, here's a short clip on one of our previous webinars. I hope that you really do enjoy it. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to the Compliance and Legislation Update for March 2019. On behalf of SAAA, my name is Letty Janse van Furen and I will be your facilitator for the next two hours. Right, let's have a quick look at our monthly update logistics before we go into anything else. Our welcome slide basically says it all. In terms of the webinar, it's supplemented by the slideshow presentation that you see now on this video. You would have been able to download the video yourself. Um, after the recording, you'll be able to get the video um, after the webinar, actually. And then after the webinar, you'll also be able to get two different packs of slides. You can get the full-on slides in PDF format, or you can get them two on a page or three on a page with space for notes. On the agenda side, you'll see under accounting, we've got one item. Then one item is a brand new summary of IFRS that I found that's a lot more user-friendly and I think a lot better for our purposes than what we had in the past. Under auditing and other assurance services, just three short little things from Urba there. Under company secretarial, uh, six items, three new notices, one guidance notice, and then just the regular, uh, there was just one company's tribunal case and so forth. Under employment law this month, I've only included one topic for you, one item, but it is a very big item and very, very topical that relates to fixed term contracts. I know that fixed term contracts are definitely growing in popularity because people know the benefits of having a fixed term contract. Right, and the problem comes in with, with certain expectations that are created. So we need to look at the dangers in terms of labor law there. In terms of other laws and regulations, only two items. I have given you the two legal update documents, so there's actually two times big five. And one of them is the Competition Amendment Bill. The Competition Amendment Bill was actually signed into law last, uh, in the, in the, during the month of February. So I just need to tell you quickly about some of the highlights there, specifically because it relates a lot more now to the small and medium micro enterprises, the SMMEs. Right. Everybody always thinks that the competition bill is only for the big guys, and it's not. Under taxation, we've got 11 items. One of them is uh, just an update on the budget speech, right? So we'll be looking at SARS's new little budget pocket guide there. Very nice, very, very good summary that they've got there. So we'll, I'll be taking you through that guide in detail. Under regulator news, we've got 14 items this month. Uh, the, the biggest one there is actually the Urba Inspections Report. Now, I'll be going through it with you in, in, some, in some detail, but very briefly, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. I'm going to talk about what it's all about. I did have a separate webinar that I had for that on the 12th of March. So the recording for that one is still available should you want it, um, if you want more detail on the Urba Inspections Report. Right, so we'll be looking at some of that. Um, the majority of items then relates to the Financial Intelligence Center. They've issued some uh, public, compliance, uh, public compliance communications, and they've also had the, the FAT, if the Financial Action Task Force meeting, and together with the meeting then comes out what they say about which jurisdictions are still, uh, how do you say, deficient or on the blacklist. Uh, for not complying with anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist um, financing deficiencies. Also then looking at how to improve the global process of anti-money laundering and so forth. That's all in the regulator news. Then under general announcements, I've got two items this month. The one deals with the, the Urba that might get, or not might, they have already gotten more muscle to crack down on auditors. And the last one is just a little bit about a heads up on the new mission that SARS is on currently. And when I say mission, I do say so very lightly. They're on a mission to um, investigate all the religious practices. Not all of them, but some of the suspect ones. So specifically looking at uh, 
eyeing some of the suspect pastors and so forth that they've identified. People are claiming that if you give a donation to the church that you can get a tax break and they're not registered as an NGO, so definitely can't happen. Right, but that's it. That's what's on the agenda for this month. So let's jump straight into our summary of the IFRA side. So on the accounting side, let's move to the IFRA's monthly news summary. Now, I want to also quickly go and show you, I said at the top there, this is a brief summary of the news and events, and it's from two major bodies. One is the IASB, which is the International Accounting Standards Board. Now, granted, in the past, the, the process that they follow is way in advance. So they'll be busy now with, if, with changes that they are proposing to come into effect in 2025. And even though for some of them early adoption is permitted or encouraged even, we don't really care about what's going to happen in five years, do we? Unless it's really, really something that we've got to get geared for now. So I thought, let, let's look at just a brief overview of that. And in future, let's look at of some of the IFRS Foundation tools that they have. Because I found a lot of useful tools and resources on the IFRS Foundation website. It's easy to go and register if you want to access any of these. You go to www.ifris.org. You can register for free, right? www.ifris.org, O-R-G, and that's it. If you look at this month's newsletter that I've given you, I've given you the links as well. I've said at the bottom, the full summary has been included in the webinar material with links to supporting and resource material that is available for your use. So let's go and have a look, for instance, at um, the feature, the first one, IAS 7 on the statement of cash flows. Right, so let's go and have a look at the material. There we go. There's our IFRS monthly news summary. And you'll see that what I've given you here are 10 items. The last two ones, really, that's about a board member's term being extended. That's not news to me anyway, but I'll, I left it in. So the first eight topics or the ones that I've got highlighted are the ones that I would suggest that you focus on. The first one deals with changes in financing liabilities. And this member of the board, Nick Anderson, he's a former buy side director. He looks at what does good disclosure look like. So he looks, he basically discusses the objectives of the new disclosure requirement of IAS 7, the statement of cash flows. Now, remember, that came into effect already in 2016. But he explains what companies can do to make their disclosures as useful as possible. So all you then do is you click on the link, right? You click on the link. And it opens up. There we go. That's him. That's Mr. Nick Anderson. And if you look at this, he talks about what is required. Now, you're more than welcome. You can go and download this as a PDF immediately. So essentially, that's what I want you to use this newsletter for in future. If it's something that interests you, go and click on it, download the article, and off you go. But they look at why it's important. Why is it different to a net debt reconciliation? Right. Because the requirements are the reconciliation must, must enable users to check what they understand on the movements of the liabilities. Right, so there we go. There's your cash flow, investing cash, outflow acquisitions, and acquired debt, and the economic effect of the acquisition then. Right. So it is different. It is different from the net debt reconciliation, but he explains it very nicely. Right, what should good disclosure look like? What areas should it have? What additional information could be uh, presented separately? And this is really where it comes into effect. And he talks about um, uh, what else an IAS 7 recon can include, uh, disaggregation that it, that should have um, sufficiently staggered, right, but not too much. But they must, be, they must be set aside by material items that are different in nature. Right, so grouping what, what needs to be grouped together. Okay. Companies can help users by doing what? They can help users by explaining what? Simple communications. Right. 
So it's very, very nice, a very nice little user-friendly article, this. But that's how you would use it again in future. Right. I hope that you enjoyed that video. For more of our webinar videos, go to www.accountingacademy.co.za. Thank you and have a lovely day.